Welcome to the Arizona Clinical Informatics Educational Series on Cerner. Lesson 2, Power Chart Basic Overview. Select the Patient Pharmacy icon on the toolbar. This takes you to a Patient Pharmacy screen. We will discuss this in depth in Lesson 4. Basically, this is where you select or review the selected patient preferred pharmacies. Select the red X button to close. Next, select Reporting Portal. This will open up the Reporting Portal, a selection of hundreds of available reports. Restrictions to several reports are based upon your Cerner assigned roles. Select the report you want and it will highlight blue. Select Run to start the report. Fill in the required fields for the location and dates you want the report to poll and select the Execute button. The report will pull up the results. Select the red X in the upper right hand corner, closes the report in the reporting portal. Now let's move down to the patient info bar. This bar contains basic demographic data on your selected patient. Code status, age, sex, isolation status, attending physician, date of birth, dosing weight, reason for visit, allergies, location, room number, and etc. are all located here. Some items on the toolbar, like allergies, allow you to advance to other sections of the chart by clicking on the hyperlink. Here, you will see all of the allergies available. You can select the plus add button to add more allergies as needed. We'll discuss this section in detail later. For now, let's select the cancel button. Next, we'll move to the dark page or M page column on the far left hand side of the chart. The defaulted first selection is orders. You'll see the orders bar is highlighted blue. This will indicate the data to the right is associated with the selected column. We'll briefly give an overview of the order in page functionality here, but for detailed training, please refer to lesson eight. Selecting the plus add icon will advance you to the add orders pop-up box. The Add Order pop-up will show you entered diagnoses and problems on the left column and will also have a search bar to search for orders. Typing in the word chest pulls up orders related to the word chest. Selecting an order will highlight that order in blue. Selecting Done would add this order to the checklist. As we're just reviewing, select the Continuing on the toolbar located within the orders in page, we select documentation medication by history. Document medication by history allows you to review or document on the home medication history. Please refer to lesson five for a complete demonstration. Select the red X in the upper right hand corner of the pop-up box to close. The reconciliation selection should be blank. This is dedicated for physicians are providers to perform admissions discharge transfer reconciliations. As nurses, you'll need to understand this process even though you do not get to see the functions. Please refer to lesson five for coverage on this. The next toolbar in the orders in page is external RX history. This is a method that pulls into pharmacy databases to pull in past prescriptions to be filled in. Be very careful if utilizing this as you still have to review the data being obtained with the patient. And if done incorrectly, you will cause issues and delays on patient care and medication reconciliation down the line. We'll review this section, but give more detail in lesson five. After selecting external RX history, a consent history pulls in. At our facilities and most tenant health facilities, the patient and or family member has already signed his consent with the admission paperwork. Selecting consent granted will gain you access to the data. The default to display RX history is set at 12 months. Selecting the drop down will give you more selections to retrieve the data. As this is a test patient, there is no data to retrieve. Selecting the close button closes the screen. In the view pane of the orders in page, you have lines such as suggested plans that have a plus mark next to them. Selecting the plus mark will expand the line to all the data in it. 
for instance, when we select the plus mark next to suggested plans, it expands to show the three suggested plans or care plans available to document from. As a reminder, more detailed coverage of the Orders M page is in Lesson 8, and Interdisciplinary Care Plans is covered in Lesson 6. Now let's start moving down the in-page options. We'll start with inpatient summary. The inpatient summary in-page gives you a summary of what has been documented in the chart. Think of it as a quick review page. Note, because it is a quick review page, not all data is available in the inpatient summary. Within this selection, you'll find recent vital signs, medications, problems, blood bank components, labs, and etc. The bedside handoff supplement in page is to be utilized during shift changes or when handing off the patient via transfer of the patient to another unit, OR, or even a radiology procedure. This in page has three tabs, Situation Background, Assessment, Recommendation. The Situation Background tab contains problems and diagnoses, patient background information, documentation, and any overdue tasks that have not been completed. The next tab, Assessment, is similar to the inpatient summary tab given you fields such as vital signs, labs, intake and output, and etc. The next tab, Recommendation, shows you any education. You'll notice our previously charted asthma education is showing, discharge plan, and any quality measures that have been documented on. Placing your mouse cursor over items gives you documentation details. The next selection to see on the end page is the VTE summary. This selection shows the VTE risk assessment and summary data on the patient. Any documented data related to VTE risk will populate here, including any orders from the physician and our provider. This is a view only page. No action can be performed on the part of the nurse. The next end page selection is results review. You'll find numerous data on this end page and it will be your primary source for reviewing documentation and results on your patient. For nurses, this defaults to the first tab, vital signs. Default for view is in reverse chronological order, which means that the last entered data will show first. Low data and results review will show in blue and high data will show in red. The next tab is Recent Results. About 90% of all entered data will be in this tab. Again, reverse chronological order is used for data. If you look at the first few rows, height and dosing weight, you'll notice that the first time column, 1259, is blank, and the second column, 1334, has data. Blank rows and time columns indicates that no data for that row or field has been entered for that time. But if you were to continue to scroll down or up on the list of results, you would find data entered on a row for that time frame. If you notice, there is a grayed out area right above the column of results that states show more orders. If a patient has been in a hospital for any length of time, this button would be active. Keep selecting the button until all data is active and the show more results is grayed out again. Directly above the show more results button is a long gray bar with a date range in it. This indicates the date range of the results you're viewing. You can use the left and right arrows at each end of the gray bar to lengthen or shorten the date range, or you could right click on the gray bar and enter a specific date you would want to view. Each tab in the results review There is a navigator column, the left-hand column. Selecting the selection in the navigator column will place it at the top of the list in the right-hand column called results. In this instance, the diagnostic radiology has been selected and it moves all information in the column to the top of the results. Select measurements on the navigator menu. And the data for measurements shows back to the top of the results column again. Select the next tab, Lab Recent, and you will see a listing of the most recent labs within the defined date ranges. With this tab, we can modify the layout of the screen. Right now, we're looking at the results via the defaulted table content. This is by date, time of the result. 
By selecting the Group Radio button, your layout changes to the grouping of the lab results under the test name with the date, again in reverse chronological order, falling beneath the lab results name. Selecting the List radio button, you get a listing of the results, much like a paper printout would appear. One item to note, this view shows you the lab reference ranges. Let's move back to the defaulted view known as the table view. Another interesting feature that might prove useful is a graphing option. To graph, select the result you want to see in a graph mode by selecting the box next to the lab result name. Here we've selected glucose random and potassium level. In between the menu end page and above the results review tabs, you will see a Two separate graphs for the lab results we selected will appear. You can select Combine to combine the two results under one graph. Of course, the sample data on this trained patient doesn't give a good representation of the graph feature. All fields and results reviewed that have numerical data can be graphed out for review. To close the graph, select the Close button. Here's an example of a lab result that is low. As stated earlier, it will show as blue for low and red for high. Double-click on the results. A results detail pop-up box appears, defaulting to the result. Here you can see the reference ranges. Clicking on the specimen tab pulls up collection information on the result. Back on the result tab, you will see the word trend in blue. This represents a hyperlink. We will select it. A new pop-up screen appears showing trend data for the selected lab results. To close the pop-up screen, select the Close button. Now we can move to the Radiology tab. Here you see the results and you can double-click to see the results of this chest x-ray. This pulls us into the dictated results of the exam. Notice this result says Final. Sometimes a preliminary result will show, so make sure you're reviewing the top of the result to determine what you're looking at. Because this is a test patient, the view image icon, which looks like a projection screen, is grayed out. If it were not grayed out, I could click on it and it would open up Merge iConnect, which is an image viewer. For demo purposes, let's pretend I had an active image to view and I clicked on the view image icon. Here is an example of a radiology result in Merge iConnect. Note that this opened a separate view screen that must be closed when review is finished or it will remain active in the background. The Microbiology tab shows us data associated with any microbiology orders. Here in this example, you see the different exams and their status, current antibiotics and inactive ones as well, and a split third screen that shows, in this instance, the urine culture results. The Pathology tab pulls in the Pathology Specimen Report. Click on the Report in the Date Time column and the results populate in a separate view. The Cardiovascular tab pulls up labs related to cardiac studies, echocardiograms, and even EKGs. Double click on the Results in the Date Time column for the EKG. A view pane of the 12 lead ECG populates. If there was more than one result, you would see multiple tabs at the top. This concludes part two of lesson two, Power Chart Basic Overview.